Hi all, welcome to today's video. We are going to discuss about infrastructure provisioning for 5G telco orchestrators. To introduce myself, I am Stefan. I work for ADL at Kiata Digital Labs. And uh, we are a service provider mainly focusing on telco and banking domains, supporting our clients in their digital enablement uh, journeys. To start with, uh, let's go to our content for the day. So first of all, uh, we'll discuss a bit of history, the transition from 3G to 5G as a whole, not only the infrastructure layer, uh, what shifted when uh, telco operators transformed from legacy 3G to uh, 5G systems. Then we'll discuss about CUPS in 5G, which is control and user plane separation, and which kind of triggers the requirement for a uh, rapid infrastructure provisioning capabilities, especially in 5G user planes. Then we will discuss some challenges that come across uh, within these setups, especially referring to some of the stats uh, based on uh, polls carried out by CNCF itself. Then we will discuss cluster API, uh, which we believe kind of quite a unique solution and quite kind of an advantage in provisioning infrastructure in 5G setups. Then we'll uh, go to the deployment architecture followed by a small demo uh, to showcase how we use Plast API within our telco orchestration systems. Right, uh, we are in transition in the telco domain. It happened earlier when we moved from 3G to 4G. Now it is happening again with the move to 5G. The changes are in RAN, uh, the radio access network, and also in the core network components, and our focus is in the latter. Where the telcos are also experiencing the shift from monolith to service-based offerings in their core network, similar to all the other domains. One could say that the telcos use of proprietary hardware coupled with special protocols and technologies has delayed them from moving into cloud native. But now it is happening and it is happening fast. Okay, uh, let us backtrack a bit and uh, see what happened when we moved from 3G to 4G. So uh, in the 3G era, the circuit switching was still a thing and proprietary closed systems were the norm and the whole core functionality was one large entity. In came 4G with uh, EPC and IP switching being the common standard. Separate core network components were defined which are connected to standardized interfaces. And the VMs were used as the infra provider with uh, some of the core functions converted as virtual network functions. But uh, still the proprietary systems and large server hardware were dominating the infrastructure layer and uh, these systems were still uh, can be considered as monolith systems. Then came the 5G with uh, vast improvements across RAN and also in the core networks. The VNFs or PNFs now being converted to CNFs, cloud native functions with service based architecture in mind. Now the core network functions are converted into multiple services and there's clear separation between the control plane and the user plane function. This separation itself allowed 5G capabilities such as network slicing and private networks where multiple UPFs are deployed in different localized environments and communicate with control plane when required. And the uh, deployment of these UPFs can be anywhere. It could be public cloud, uh, hybrid environments, on-prem data centers, basically anywhere you name. Now this introduces the challenge. When providing infrastructure for these user plane function, we need to be quick. And it is critical for telco operators or telco vendors and support partners, people like us, to be able to come up with solutions that can cater for these type of dynamic infrastructure requirements. Now, if we summarize up to this point, the main takeaway here is CUPS, 
and the fact that it triggers the requirement of declarative infra platforms that can be made available quickly across multiple providers for its UPF and the capabilities to do so can give any telco the edge with uh, lower time to market. Okay, let's move forward and discuss a bit more about CUPS. As mentioned earlier, the concept of CUPS provides the basis for low latency operations in 5G networks because the processing is moved closer to the end user with the user plane function. As an example, consider a smart factory with all the IoT devices, autonomous machines, and so forth. And these devices rely heavily on high speed intercommunication. Now, the practical scenario is smart city with autonomous cabs are in operation. And the backbone of these autonomous vehicles is the underlying ultra low latency reliable communication platform, which is the 5G network. User plane functions such as quality of service or routing plays a crucial role in the proper operation of these networks. And what this example shows is the 5G UPF can be and they need to be deployed anywhere. The factory might be using their own data center, cloud, private cloud, anything. And the operation will be at large scale as well. So this results the requirements of manageable, reusable infra management procedure, which of course should be declarative considering the scale factor. Okay, uh, let's move forward. Now, uh, as we establish the requirement of infra platforms that can be deployed anywhere for UPFs, let's discuss the options and challenges one could face. First up is a fact, a fact based on recent survey performed by CNCF on telco operators on the challenges they see while they are in this shift from legacy systems to cloud native deployments. And as per the results, that third place goes to cluster management, the infra management part of it. Let alone the requirement of moving to cloud native services on their own core network where they have the full control. Now the telcos are also expected to have the ability to deploy rapidly on user spaces as well. This is true not only for telcos but for telco vendors, support partners and for network function developers who may be developing different UPF functions. As an example, if you take a particular software component that address specific use case in 5G ecosystem, this product itself should be able to come up with rapid deployment capabilities. You cannot go and ask your clients to provide specific hardware, specific kind of cluster deployment or a preferred cloud provider. Or there can't be any dependent components. All should be part and parcel, ready to be deployed anywhere and kind of pluggable as well. The concepts like GitOps and orchestration layers should help in this scenario as they provide the background for successful deployments and integrations. Uh, okay, let us move forward. Okay, the background is set. We discussed the changes, we discussed the challenges, and we know the requirements. Now, uh, what tools in the CNCF stack can help us to address this? In comes Cluster API. Along with some additional supporting tools, uh, we believe that it provides a wonderful platform to deploy UPFs across different infrastructure environments. Cluster API itself is managed by CNCF SIG Special Interest Group, and it's a production-ready product. Cost API was developed to address this specific requirement. That is the need of declarative approach to define and manage infrastructure across multiple infrastructure providers, be it be in the cloud, on-prem bare metal, VMs, etc. And uh, Cloud API supports many providers, including almost all the public cloud providers 
and also bare metal solution, making it a great fit for 5G uh, telco domain, especially considering the requirements of HD deployment related to 5G ecosystems. And Cluster API is based on operator model, so it extends the Kubernetes and gets the infra management under itself. It uh, deploys a management cluster where it runs its core services with multiple providers. As an example, let's say we are managing clusters for two different enterprise private 5G networks, one on top of AWS and another on top of GCP. In this type of scenario, we need to configure cluster API management cluster with two providers, that is for AWS and GCP. So cluster API allows us to define declarative clusters and of course reuse them. And the other major point to emphasis is that the cluster API is not only about deployment or the commission of the clusters. It actually provides the lifecycle management capability for the cluster. Let's say you need to scale up the cluster. You need to increase the nodes from two to three or whatever the number is. Just do it with a change in the manifest or assume you need to update the cluster, a version upgrade. Say you can do it with Cluster API in standard manner across worker cluster. In our use case of 5G, UPF deployment uh, that provide a distinct advantage, especially the capability to deploy uh, within any pro infrastructure provider. If you refer the diagram here, uh, thus far, we only discuss on this particular box, the infrastructure management part. If we go for a broader view uh, of the deployment, Fast API is a great match for modern cloud native application orchestration platform to be part of it as the infrastructure provider, and it can be an integral part of platform engineering ecosystem. Assume that you are using platform that helps your application development, CICD, reporting, analytics, and so forth. Why not include infra management part of your application platform? So this will allow applications to be deployed anywhere with minimum hazard. So this is where Cluster API shines the most. Also, there are some other tools that can make Cluster API more user-friendly. One in particular is uh, Customize. Customize uh, is a configuration management tool and it helps a lot in reusability. As an example, assume it is required to deploy different environments of cloud native applications such as dev, QA, prod in different infrastructure providers. For this, you can use Customize to reuse cluster API manifest and reduce the duplicating effort. Okay, now let's move in to briefly discuss the deployment architecture of Cluster API in 5G UPF environment. So as discussed earlier, Cluster API requires its own management cluster. This management cluster can run anywhere and we can set up required providers that are being managed. One management cluster can provision and control any number of workload uh, clusters in different providers, of course. Cluster API creates multiple CRDs in its control cluster, including machines and machine templates. This allows us to define cluster nodes which are pre-configured with telco related deployment prerequisites. Examples, uh, if you take SRIOV or Malta CN9. So they can be pre installed in the nodes. This speeds up the cluster provision and adds a great deal of flexibility as well. Also, K8 Image Builder can be used to define these reusable machine images under different infrastructure providers. So let's move into our demo. It is more of a discussion on how we use Cluster API within our orchestration platform. For the demo purposes, we have one management cluster running and there's one workload cluster provision on top of Docker. Let's use Cluster API Visualizer to view our current topology. Okay, let's start with the demo. 
the idea of this is to show how easy it is to spin up a new cluster with uh, specific requirements for a given service using Trust API. So what we have here at the moment is uh, Ubuntu machine with uh, kind installed Kubernetes in Docker. And we are running our control plane, uh, cluster API control plane on top of kind. And to add, uh, kind is not supported for cluster API control planes in production use. But for demo purposes, we are using kind today. But if the control plane is intended for production use, the control uh, it should be running on uh, supported infrastructure provider so this uh, among these two uh, kind clusters the main uh, cluster names kind is hosting the control plane for us if we check uh, what ports are running under trust api itself uh, we will see the main trust api services as well as the uh, providers we have configured. So if we take CPI system, it's the main uh, Trust API core service, the Trust API backend itself. And in our setup, we have two infrastructure providers configured. One is CAPG system, uh, which is the infrastructure provider for GCP uh, cloud. And CAPG system is the infrastructure provider for Docker. And for demonstration purposes, we do have a Docker cluster running, a worker cluster running uh, configured with CAPD system. So it is running with uh, one uh, single control plane node and two worker nodes. Now, this is just for the demonstration purposes to uh, showcase the multi provider capabilities of uh, Trust API. And for visualization purposes, we are using uh, open source project uh, Trust API visualizer. So this is our current setup as of now. We have our control plane running on top of kind and we have our uh, worker cluster running on, on top of Docker named Doc5G. If we go inside, uh, we can see that it has one control plane machine and uh, two worker nodes uh, running at the moment so that is our current setup that is what we have in hand at the moment uh, and also uh, we do have an interface uh, created around cluster api and it's a sample interface that operators can use to manage the worker clusters in a single portal. Uh, with this kind of portal, we can optimize the DevOps execution by preferred workflows to support uh, boilerplate development, uh, not only in the integration level, but in the deployment level as well. And this will help to implement platform engineering practices without compromising governance requirement uh, in any given operator environment. Uh, so to come back to our uh, context back again, uh, now in order to demonstrate uh, the Trust API's capability to go across providers, uh, let's assume we need to spin up another cluster this time on top of GCP, uh, which support our 5G UPF service may be running in a data center for a client hosted on uh, GCP itself. Uh, and also, this particular service might need uh, uh, specific requirements, maybe specific tools related to 5G set up under uh, the Kubernetes worker nodes. So first up, what we need is an uh, image machine image built uh, with the requirements of this application pre-installed. So in our case, we do have this machine image created for GCP using the uh, image builder, Kubernetes image builder. So 
what image builder allow us to do is define machine images in reusable manner and add version control capabilities based on our requirements as well so basically it provides a declarative way to define the images and uh, these images can be defined across providers this image builder product uh, goes along with cluster api it is kind of uh, part of cluster api but uh, it can definitely used as a standalone product a product for any other purposes as well uh, so we do have our cluster image uh, creator uh, to be used as our basis for our nodes for the gcp kubernetes cluster now let's go ahead and deploy a cluster using the, this image uh, so in our case uh, we will use the interface that i have mentioned earlier so at the moment the backend cluster supports gcp and docker only so we will select gcp this selection in the backend will configure the uh, gcp project region the service accounts the authentication tokens all the configurations that are required for uh, gcp operation through cluster api and if we take the cluster config template uh, this of course will point to our image which we have created already and this have the uh, configurations related to number of control plane nodes we are using number of worker nodes we are using uh, and uh, the compute engine class the node type we are going to use uh, for control plane and uh, worker node uh, configurations uh, so for this configuration we will be using uh, one node for one node each for control plane and worker node uh, as well so application configuration is related to the uh, services which are going to be deployed on, on top of this cluster along with cluster creation for for this demo purposes we will not deploy any applications so let's go ahead and uh, create the cluster and uh, just to mention if we check the uh, backend uh, the gcp backend that we are calling through this uh, cluster api interface at the moment it has only one vm instance running but once we uh, start the uh, cluster initialization we will see the uh, new nodes being provisioned uh, actually two nodes will be provisioned one for control plane and one as a worker node in this particular project so let's go ahead and uh, create the cluster now uh, this should take some time to complete and if we switch to our uh, vm instances uh, page in gcp console we should see the cluster provisioning getting started and also from the uh, yeah uh, cluster api visualization uh, visualizer now we are seeing that the new cluster on gcp provisioning has started already so it will first uh, deploy the control plane uh, then it will uh, deploy the worker node uh, in gcp so since this is going to take some time uh, meanwhile uh, let's discuss about some of the challenges the operational challenges that could come up uh, during this type of worker cluster management uh, topology that is used by uh, cost api one of the main challenges uh, that could occur is the concerns related to connectivity now the connectivity between control cluster and worker clusters are must for this uh, topology to work out but especially in a setup where multiple providers i use this requirement uh, can span maybe multiple public clouds and this might result in uh, configuration overhead as well also there might be an argument uh, the initial efforts required with setting up 
this solution might be a bit of hectic uh, and there might be concerns related to security as well as there's one privileged entity the control plane that acts act as a central uh, point to manage all of the clusters so uh, those are uh, all in all uh, operational concerns and specific to the given implementation but overall, considering the advantages Cluster API provides related to manageability, especially when deployed in scale, uh, can counter these challenges uh, for a given environment. Okay, so now our uh, cluster is provisioned. We have our control plane node up and running, and our worker node is up and running as well. And Cluster API visualizer, visualizer also uh, confirms that the uh, GCP cluster is also provisioned. So now we can use this cluster for any purpose uh, similar to any other uh, Kubernetes cluster that we deploy using uh, any of the methods that are in place. So again to emphasize and uh, being uh, going back to where we started this kind of declarative and uh, uh, manageable uh, cluster deployments can immensely help in use cases such as 5g where there's a requirement for rapid infrastructure deployment across providers now in our example we touched docker and gcp only but the cluster API provider list is uh, very impressive and includes almost all the public cloud providers and the bare metal solutions uh, as well. So for a given use case where there's a requirement for deploy many number of uh, clusters, the solution uh, give uh, immense advantage uh, to uh, configure and manage clusters with uh, more confidence and ease. So the demo concludes our video for the day and hope uh, you all enjoyed the content and thanks a lot for joining. So until next time, bye. Thanks.